بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد my beloved brothers all praise and thanks is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us with iman may allah keep us with iman may allah take us away from this world in the state of perfect iman and on the day of qiyamah may allah pak us resurrect us with perfect iman all praise and thanks also due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made us in the beloved ummah of sayyidina muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam my beloved friends allah pak send us in this world for a very short time actually the truth is we've not come to live we've come to die less fortunately the effort that all of us are making is the effort to live and what we forgot is to die i was at a meet the other day a young boy of 17 passed away accident and before jumma so around just before the janaza I saw everybody was crying youngsters and all of them so I thought to myself actually why the people are crying are they crying because they're going to miss their friend or are they crying because they worried what's going to happen in akhirat to this person imagine nabi ali salam's beloved daughter zainab radhiyallahu anha habbar bin aswad allah akbar stabbed her in the stomach when she was pregnant when she was making hijrat from makkah to medina to meet nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and eventually after few years she passed to him that is the excuse but she passed away he say at her janaza rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the word in urdu is was ghamgeen worried sahaba noticed this on his mubarak face that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was worried until the time nabi al islam made the janaza and took his mubarak body mubarak daughter's body and put in the cover then he came out smiling sahaba say we never saw this before allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i was worried what's going to happen to my daughter in the journey after death but when the malaika welcomed her it gave me consolement that alhamdulillah my daughter's journey and who's zainab radhiyallahu anha In the haram when Nabi Allahu Akbar was being beaten and telling people ya yuhan nas qulu la ilaha illallah tufriu oh people say this kalima oh people say this kalima oh people say this kalima beating Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to run behind him and say leave my father leave my father leave my father leave my father at the time of hajj in the pre islamic era when Nabi Allahu Akbar used to go and say accept this kalima that kafir came and stabbed the camel right in its flank the camel fell down Nabi Allahu Akbar fell Allahu Akbar Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bruised and battered Zainab radhiyallahu anha was the one who took that piece of cloth and all her bones Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bruises can you imagine as she put a piece of cloth how she must have been and Nabi alaihi wasallam was worried about dead daughter's death Wallah pious man said if we fear jahannam as much as we fear poverty we are already jannatis That life is real this is not real This life Allah has taken the responsibility wa ma min dabatin fil ard illa lillah rizquha ruh e zameen par koi se jaandar cheez nahi hai jiska rozi ka zimmedar Allah kehte main hu on the face of the earth there is a living being we are not talking of human being we talking of animals we talking of that elephant that eats 300 kilos of grass every day we talking of that whale whose consumption we can't even imagine allah has taken care of every human being's needs wallah allah has taken care of every human being's needs on the face of this earth and the thing that we fear like in urdu poet says khuda ko bhool gaye log fikr e rozi mein khayal e rizq ka razaq ka khayal nahi allah akbar we are frightened for our sustenance we are not frightened about the one who's the sustainer the only worry a man got allah akbar what's going to happen to my child allah we heard from ulama ikram this beautiful story and i'm sure you've heard it hundreds of times but we need in our life what is called repetition because repetition is the only way of learning he say allah akbar allah asked the angel of death when did you feel pity when you took the ruh of somebody he said on two occasions 
He said one was what? He said one was there was a ship that, a ship that sank. And on a little piece of wood, which we call a raft, all that was left was a mother with a suckling baby whose urine is not in his control, who's got no mind. At that time, you asked me to take the mother's room. And he said, when was the other? He said, there was a person in your disobedience who made his own call, so-called inverted commas, Jannet, somewhere in Yemen, with hundreds of thousands of people working for him, leaves made of gold and silver and whatever it was. And just when it was ready and how in the old days he cut the ribbon and entering, when the one leg was in and the other one was out, you asked me to take his rule. So Allah bari ta'ala, the knower, the creator, the sustainer, the controller, the provider, the teacher, Allah the in charge of every emotion and thought, ask the angel of death, do you know who that is? The angel said, Allah, that I don't know. He said he was the same little baby that was left on that stormy waters. Who's Allah? Who's Allah? Which father can provide? How many earned never ate? How many left for their children? It didn't come into the hands of their children. I got a Russian uh, brother who became an alim. He told me an Ajib story. He says there was a father who got five daughters. And he said if I get the sixth one I'm putting her in an orphanage. I can't handle it. And Allah gave him the sixth daughter. And he put her in an orphanage. And after that Allah gave him five sons. And all those sons passed away in early age. And all the five daughters got married. And at the end, by the custom of Allah, the one who looked after him was the daughter from the orphanage. Where we think it's happening from, it's not. That money can't do anything for us, nor our children. <laughs> how, how nice. For that thing for which we died today has come back to kick us. We have to take our faith away from what we own, what we possess, what we desire, where our hopes are, our intentions are. We have only one hope, that is to die. And how to die? Imagine Allah, Akbar, my beloved brothers, the greatest of all mankind. They say no Nabi ever worried about after death because, I say Allah, Akbar, Jannat was made for them. They say nobody can enter Jannat until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa enters. No Nabi can enter Jannat. Yet Nabi alayhi salam is making dua. Allahumma hasibna hisabi yasira. Oh Allah, give me an easy reckoning. My shardi Allah Allah says, Oh Nabi Allah, over even you, who Allah has promised, even if you sin, when I was with Allah, Nabi never sinned. He says so beautifully, sin never came close to a Nabi. Yet Nabi alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, give me an easy reckoning. My shardi Allah Allah said, even you, he said, oh Aisha, even I can only go to Jannat by the mercy of Allah. My brothers, this hasn't come into us. High hopes, great expectation, inordinate longing, leaves a man with an occupation that leaves him absolutely no spare time. Wallah, my beloved brothers, you know when I'm asking you, have more people become poor out of greed or out of need? The needs of a human being, Allah, kept easy. In Urdu, it says so nicely, ek roti, do boti, choti se koti. One piece of bread, two pieces of meat, a little covering over the head. What is more than that that a person needs? And what the hopes are? And he, shaitan, a shaitan, yayidukumul fakr, shaitan fears us with what? Poverty. And wallah, every prom ah, so nicely, one of the elders said, he say in the whole Quran, Allah has never said the way to earn. Allah only said the way to spend. <laughs> spend on the poor, spend on the orphans, spend on the needy. Allah said spend. He say if you spend, I'll spend on you. Spend and he'll spend on you, Allah says. And man fears if I give, what will happen? It's not nice. I'm not talking against schools. There's a lot of professors from Kerala here, so they might think I'm, you know. Say, huh? Where's one plus one? It's not two. How can it be two? Imagine Allah says, if you give sadqa, it'll increase your wealth. Ten minus one, how can it increase? And if you take interest, Allah doesn't say decrease. Allah says destroy. That is a yakin in the heart. Huh? 
that faith to grow into us. We are sent for another place. Allah Akbar, my brother. In front of our eyes every day, Allah shows a lesson. Like Salman Farsi, Allah say, my looking is to take a lesson from. Every day in front of us. Father is looking at his blue-eyed boy. And Allah takes the blue-eyed boy before he takes the father. Every day. Malik al comes to every house. And what's the announcement? I will never leave this house until I take everyone from this house. What, what? Sikandar left the world. How he left the world? He said to his mom, he said, take my hands. The richest man on earth. Not for one time, probably for all time. He said, take my hands and put it out of the coffin. And the mother asked why. He said, so Sikandar can also show the world. I take nothing with me from this earth. Allah gave us being, my blood. Our purpose and objective is for what? For this deen to come in our lives, in our children's life, in mankind's life. Men without deen, what is the consequence? Our Jamaat was recently in, in America. You see, my beloved brothers, Wallah, just think where our lives are going. So a person told me, you know, I said in one bayan, and I'm sure, probably, I don't know about Natel, but Transvaal, I can tell you, that there's hardly a family, and an extended family, that can say now, that there isn't somebody in our family who's left Islam. So I said this. So a brother came to me, he said to me, you know what? You just opened my eyes. So I asked him, what do you mean? He said, when I came to America, that is 50 years ago, I was working for my uncle and he had about 13 to 15 convenience stores and which convenience stores in America means anything from liquor to lottery and we were printing money printing money and my sister got married to Alhamdulillah a person of Dean and he moved to Chicago and Allah put in my heart move away so I just went to my uncle gave the keys of the stores and I moved at that time my uncle was very upset with me he said, 40 years later, it was just before this Ramadan, this last Ramadan. And my uncle phoned me. And my uncle cried and actually sobbed. And I asked my uncle, why are you sobbing? And my uncle said to me, my son, you did the wisest thing. So I asked him why. He said, my son, if I die now, there isn't one person in my progeny who can send three kuns to me. Imagine you earn for kafirs. He said, Dunya, what? Is this all? We lived in small houses, 15 people shared a toilet. Was it a problem? Has this become the objective that everybody must have a toilet? We took our daughters out of the treasury box and put them in universities for fear of risk. Who's the provider? The entire Quran ulama ikram are sitting in this gathering. What Allah says, The one who fears Allah, Allah will give him sustenance from unseen sources. The one who depends on Allah, Allah says, I'm sufficient for him. Where Allah kept it in a shop or a job or a degree? Huh? How many go for the bread just to find themselves dead? We forgot who's our Allah. How Allah says in a hadith to the meaning, Oh my slave, even if you forget me, I'll not forget you. Allah didn't forget a, a kafir. Ibrahim alayhi salam invites that person. Uh, yeah, that person comes. Ibrahim alayhi salam tells him, take the name of my Allah. He said, I don't believe in your Allah. How can I take his name? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, then this food is also no good for you. As soon as he leaves, Allah reveals to Ibrahim alayhi salam to the effect, 70 or 75 years of his life I'm feeding him today he didn't take my name and you stop Ibrahim Lissam runs behind him brings him and tells him eat he takes the name of Allah Allah looks after his enemy Allah is Wallah, my, until there's one man on this earth saying Allah Allah the day of Qiyamah will not come 
It's not the shop, it's not the job, this is the reflection. Imagine it is said, that student who learns deen, even the animals make dua for him. Why? Because they are getting their rosy because of his learning deen. It's not where we think. It's not the businessman looking after the masjid. By the custom of Allah, it is the sajda of the man in the masjid who Allah is looking after the businessman. Allah is such a provider besides whom nobody provides. Such a protector besides whom nobody protects. Such a giver besides whom nobody gives. Such a maker besides whom nobody makes. Am I beloved brothers? Allah is the Sahaba Ikram. This one large man. Look at the yakin in Allah, Zat and Kutrat. They say when the, the, the expedition of the trenches took place, at that time there was a boulder which couldn't, which no Sahabi could break. Nabi Alayhi Salam took the axe or whatever. And as he hit it, the spark came out. He said, Inshallah, we'll conquer Rome. Who is speaking to? People who got stones fastened to their bellies. When that Sahabi showed Nabi Alayhi Salam, I got one stone. Nabi Alayhi Salam showed him, I got two stones fastened to my belly. Huh? Why to numb the hunger? And therefore, those people, Nabi Alayhi Salam is saying, Inshallah, we'll conquer Rome. And the next shot, he said, we'll conquer Persia. So that Sahabi, imagine, who's got a stone fastened to his belly, had so much yakin on the words of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, then I won the princess hen of Persia in marriage. Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, she's yours. To who? A person who's got a stone fastened to his belly. That Sahabi says, Wallahi, I noticed that day when we conquered Persia and she was on a white mule and she's coming. And she says, there's, there's the one that I wanted. Obviously, she was an old woman by that time. So the royal family came and said to him, we'll offer you anything, any amount. Give our sister back. So he said, give me 100, 100. Means 10,000. So another sahabi tells him, you're taking such a small amount? He said, by the custom of Allah, I don't know you. There's an amount more than this. <laughs> this was the yakin they had in Allah. And this is what the value of dunya they had. We know zillion, we know trillion. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, a man who misses one namaz, it is worse than losing all his family, all his property, all his possession. By the custom of Allah, if that man namaz, he earned a zillion that day. Wallahi, he is lost, he is never gained. And if that person who made salah even loses a million, he is never lost. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said it. Am I beloved brothers? We got deen. Success is in deen. The only thing in deen. One who brings our mother Fatima radiallahu anha, who the queen of the woman of Jannat. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the ayats of Quran revealed on their generosity. I say when Fatima radiallahu anha passed away, or left this world, or made parda from this world, at that time, look at her wasiyat. She said, nobody ever saw the shape and form of my body while I was alive. I want when I'm dead, also bury me at night so nobody must see the shape and form of my body. He said, on the way, just thought, by the way, Abu Rehan Aradilano goes to the cover and puts his leg on the side of the cover. And he says, oh, cover, do you know who's coming into you today? There's a voice from the unseen. It's not important who comes. It's important what, what they come. Anyway, my beloved brothers, Allahu Akbar. It is said in the Azaz and Ikram, in the honor of Fatima radiallahu on the day of Qiyamah, when she'll be crossing the bridge of Shirat, at that time there'll be an announcement, Ya Ahl Mehshar, O oh, the people of Qiyamah, Mehshar, meaning Jinnat, Insan, Malaika, all of you, Malaika, not men, not jinn, lower your gaze. Today my Fatima is crossing. We got that life which is not going to end. It's forever. Allah has promised what? For that mu'min who dies with Iman. Imagine a place which Nabi Ali Islam describes. Allahu Akbar. Look at the beautiful words of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such a place no eye has seen, no ear has heard of, no mind can think, and no heart can desire. Such a place where youth will never go into old age. Can you imagine where health, there's no thought of sickness. And life, no death. And wallahi lazim on this earth, we don't have the money, but I can tell you, there isn't a rich man 
In fact, the rich fear more for poverty than the poor fear for poverty. But in Akhir, behind that riches, there isn't even an afterthought of poverty. And they say, after Allah gives all these nemats in Jannat, then Allah will ask, O oh, Jannatis, is there anything else? And say, even that time, Allah reward, we'll have to ask the ulama ikram. And as we ask the ulama ikram, they'll say, ask for the pleasure of Allah. And say, is Allah Akbar, Allah will make, Allah will say, from today I'm happy with you and will never be sad with you. They say, that statement of Jannat, one can imagine what will happen. My brothers, we are going. We meant to go. We've been sent to go. We've been created to go. Wallah. This dunya by the custom of Allah, the day we take a turn away from it, it's like a shadow that will follow us. By Hafiz Abdul Rahman, Mia Sabra Hamtulali, Mia Allah Falis Kabar with Nur, one of our elders of us, Ajib, those who know, knew him, my beloved brothers. I used to say, Four shukars make every day of your life. Allah gave us kalima. Allah made us ummah of Rasul Ali Salam. Allah covered our gunas, otherwise, which husband would be able to stand in front of his wife? Or which father will be able to stand in front of his child? We are such gunegars. And the fourth one, Allah kept Rosie in his hands. The boss can take your job, he can never take your Rosie. The government can expropriate your shop, but he can never take your risk. Huh? That is how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say Allah Akbar. As regards dunya, we human beings, O son of Adam, if you have one valley of gold, you'll desire another. And if you get another, you'll desire another. And the only thing that will fill the belly of the eye is the sand of the grave. And then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on one occasion, Jibreel Islam did not tell me. He blew into my heart. You will never die. You will never die. You will never die until what is meant for you doesn't get to you. Wallah, my beloved brothers, we've been sent. Our only worry is that place which I don't know. You don't know. Can you imagine, my beloved brothers? It's Jumma. It's not a time for a bayan. Umar bin Khattab I end with this, my beloved. Umar was stabbed by a majus. He laid unconscious for a couple of days. A Bedouin walked in. He said, where's Amirul Mu'minin? They said, Desi. He said, wake him up. He said, you go. He said, Amirul Mu'minin, Salah. Amirul Mu'minin, Salah. Amirul Mu'minin, Salah. Umar shook his head. And said, Wallah, there's no place in Islam for that one who doesn't have salah. There's no place in Islam for that one who doesn't have salah. Then my beloved brothers, say, Now Umar radiallahu Allah Akbar, his son Abdullah said to him, I put his head, Umar radiallahu's head, and put it in the lap of his. Umar radiallahu pushed his head off and said, My son, this head is not fit for your lap. Go into the Haram of Medina Munawwara. If today people are crying that a good man is leaving, then inshallah Allah will treat me how my people think of me. And if today people are happy that a bad man is leaving, then Allah will also treat me how my companions think of me. He goes into the Haram. He says, but I ask you for one thing. Ulama say probably the greatest sacrifice that ever given by a woman. He says, just ask Aisha radiallahu anha. That place which was reserved for her next to her father, and the greatest of all mankind, a husband, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If she'll allow me to sleep in that place in the Rosa Mubarak, and she sleep with the common people in Buki. He goes and he asks, Say, Aisha radiallahu anha, Allahu Akbar. A sound from her chest. Say, I'll allow Umar. Can you imagine what a sacrifice that is? And then she, he goes into the haram. And obviously, no doubt, La Nabi Abada. There's no Nabi. After Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had there been Nabi alayhi salam said it would be been Umar. He comes there and sees oh, the people. You can imagine the state of the people. Khalifatul Muslim and Umar radiallahu anhu, on whom how many ayats of Quran were revealed in his opinion. He's leaving the world. Allah Akbar, he sees them. Crying. Comes back, Abbas radiallahu anhu joins him. Abbas radiallahu anhu tells oh, Umar, if you walk on the right, shaitan walked on the left. Allah Akbar, you the one that when you made the announcement, Ya Sari al Jabal, Allah Akbar Sari Aridiyallahu, how many hundred kilometers away was there? You directed him without any type of intercommunication. 
Huh? You're the one who saw, wrote the right letter directly to the river Nile. Oh, Nile, if you flow on your own will, then stop flowing. And if you flow by the will of Allah, then never stop flowing. From that day, the river Nile never stopped flowing. And he kept on giving him. And Abbas radiallahu was talking. And Umar radiallahu was weeping. And Umar radiallahu was weeping. And he says, oh, Abbas, oh, Abbas, if you can stand guarantee for me on the day of Qiyamah, then I know I'll be okay. My beloved friends, Allah has given us a short life. Let's make peace with our Allah. Make do I also make peace. The journey is an everlasting one. What are our progenies to come? What are we leaving for them? If my son didn't read Fajr Namaz today, how can Barakat ever enter that house? How can Rahmat ever come in that house? How can Muhabbat come in that house? What's the good of a palace if there's no muhabbat? What's the good of money if there's no barakat? What's the good of life without afiyat? Rahat. Man produces a face outside and inside his house is suffering. What good is that? How can we get that good life which is called hayatun tayyaba? We're not even talking about akhirat in dunya. It's in deen, my brothers. It's in deen. Will Allah get this deen into our life? By the custom of Allah. Bring talim into our homes. Let our wives and children hear the beautiful hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we bring them this Mubarak kitabs that we got. Allah will bring that into our home. Make sure that nobody but nobody in our home. The men five salawat jamaat. We're fortunate. There's masjids everywhere. Five salawat jamaat. Allah akbar. In our masjids there's the halqa of talim. Sit for the talim. Wallah my beloved brothers. Allah Akbar, it is Allah's promise. It is Allah's promise. O oh, son of Adam, free yourself from my worship. And I'll free you from your worldly encroachment and attachment. Allah will give us a good life. Api, Allah, the promise of Allah with this. Who remembers Allah after Fajr and after Asr? The in-between period. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah say to the effect, I'm sufficient for you. Bring that, my Lord. Wallah, our namaz wa jamaat, don't let the day go. Allah Akbar, let them, the azab, if we can't make it. Five namaz wa jamaat, our tilawat of Quran, this Mubarak kitab. The closer man, the more man reads Quran, the closer he is to Allah on the day of Qiyamah. What you want? Quran, zikr. Brothers, I learned with this, how the poet says, Jab mujhe chalna nahi aya, log girne nahi dete. When I couldn't walk, people wouldn't allow me to fall. Up to chalna agia, log girane ki koshish milege. Now that I can walk, people are making an effort to make me fall. Jab kisi ke paas gari nahi thi, sab ke paas wakta. When nobody had a watch for sick, weak, poor parents, we had time to visit them. Up sab ke paas gari hai, kisi ke paas wakta nahi. Now everybody's got a watch, but nobody's got time anymore. Then he says so beautifully, Jab bhi hoyer mera bai bachcha tha, Biz dafa rozana larta tha, Sone se pehle gali mila kar so jata tha. When me and my brother were small, We fought 20 times a day, But before sleeping we hugged each other and slept. Ab to ek dafa larta ho, Or maut tak apas mein baat nahi karta ho. Now we fight one time, Until death we don't talk to each other. Let's not go like that, my beloved. This beloved deed, let us bring it. It's the only thing that is going with us. Allah keep us all with Iman. Allah keep us with Islam. Allah make our family relations be good. Allah make us to fit to see the weak, the needy, the bay namazi. Allah make us to bring everybody close to Allah. Let it be amongst those on the day of Qiyamah who will be silting on pulpits of Noor. Ambiya shuhada salihin will envy them. You see, who are these people who traverse the world in the love of Allah and whose only object was to make people love Allah? Allah give us all tawfiq. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.